a good day everyone in this video we will have an introduction to the first subsystem of ais that is the transaction processing system or tps our objectives for this module are as follows first to understand the broad objectives of transaction cycles second to recognize the types of transactions processed by each of the three transaction cycles third to know the basic accounting records used in transaction processing systems fourth to understand the relationship between traditional accounting records and their magnetic equivalents in computer-based systems. Fifth, to be familiar with the documentation techniques used for representing manual and computer-based systems. Finally, to understand the differences between batch and real-time processing and the impact of these technologies on transaction processing. Transaction processing system is considered the heart of AIS because all transactions undergo in this subsystem before it flows to the other subsystems of AIS, which are GLS, FRS, and MRS, mentioned on module one on your e-learning videos. In this video, we will focus on TPS. GLS, FRS, and MRS will be discussed on a separate module. Now, let us understand the function of TPS. TPS converts economic events into financial transactions. If an event is a financial transaction or a non-financial transaction that will trigger financial transactions in the future, TPS captures the relevant data of that particular event. For example, sales order sent by a customer. The relevant data are collected, such as customer number, customer name, shipping address, order date, item, price, and total amount. Once the data are collected, TPS records the financial transactions in the accounting records, such as journals and ledgers. Finally, the data are processed further by distributing it as essential information to operations personnel to support their daily operations. Now let's understand the transaction processing between manual system and computer-based system. Under manual system, transactions are handwritten or entered via mechanical devices, such as a bundy clocks or typewriters. And then these are entered or handwritten in pre-printed forms or sheets of formal papers that are used by the business. In addition, data processing activities such as, but not limited to, sorting or arranging alphabetically or numerically the data, summarization of data as a type of transactions, and posting to the subsidiary ledgers and general ledgers are done manually. To better understand this, let's use an example. On your screen, you'll see time cards used by fast food crews. Before they enter the sales outlet, their time cards are placed on the wooden shelves beside the back door. Those shelves are marked with letters representing the first letter of the surnames of the employees. The crews get their time cards and inserts it on the Bundy clock 
the bondy clock is a mechanical device that punches the time in and time out of employees. Every week, for example, the timekeeper collects the time cards, manually calculates the regular and overtime hours worked, the absences and lates for the week, and then send it to the manager for approval. Once approved by the manager, the, pay, the timekeeper prepares a report indicating hours worked by the employees for submission to payroll. So imagine the volumes of tasks done and the time it consumes to collect data about labor of employees for payroll processing. Now let's go with the transaction processing system under computer-based system. The computer-based accounting systems use applications or software to handle some, most, or all of the data processing activities. To better understand this, let's use an example. On your screen is an example of a timesheet of a computer software called Chrono. This software allows employees, supervisors, managers, timekeepers, and perhaps payroll to enter or track employees' time via a timesheet screen. Employees can enter the tasks they have done for the day, enter the hours for that day, they can also enter their vacation leave and sick leaves. The computer software performs uh, some data processing activities like automatically calculating the number of regular and overtime hours worked by the employee. You'll notice on the screen there's uh, a number of 40. That's the number of hours worked by the employee as well as the paid absences, if any. Using the software, a report can also be generated from the computer software listing all employees for a given timesheet period. For example, timesheet period for week one, week two, week three, and so forth. That report can also include the regular and overtime hours work, by the employee that need to be paid as well as paid absences to facilitate payroll processing. Notice that using the computer software, some tasks are done by the computer, which saves time and speeds up the next transaction processing, which is payroll. Now let's discuss the subsystems of TPS. TPS is divided into subsystems, namely expenditure cycle, conversion cycle, and revenue cycle. Each cycle has subsystems too. Expenditure cycle has purchasing system, cash disbursement system, payroll processing system, and fixed asset system. Conversion cycle has cost accounting system and production and planning system. Revenue cycle has sales processing system and cash receipts system. We will take a quick look of each of those subsystems Detailed discussions of those subsystems are on separate modules. Let's start with the expenditure cycle. The first subsystem of the expenditure cycle is the purchasing system, or sometimes called AP system. The purchasing system or AP system involves the acquisition of physical inventory, placing orders with the vendors 
and establishment of payables. In some systems or software, the purchasing system is segregated or separate from the AP system. This means the purchasing system solely handles purchasing data, such as purchase requisition, purchase orders, and receipts of inventories. While the AP system handles the recognition of accounts payable by processing accounts payable vouchers that are normally supported by approved uh, purchase orders and receiving reports from the purchasing system. Next is the cash disbursement system. This system is behind the authorization of payments and disbursements of funds to vendors. This is the system involved in the processing and approval of checks or electronic fund transfers as payments to suppliers and vendors. Let us proceed to the payroll system. This system collects labor usage data for each employee, calculates the payroll of employees, and payments of employees' payroll either via check or direct debits or electronic fund transfer to the bank accounts of employees. Finally, the fixed asset system. This involves the acquisition, maintenance, and disposal of fixed assets. Although this system is linked to the purchasing an AP system, it is considered a separate system due to uniqueness of transactions. Fixed assets involve large amount of money when acquired and maintained. And this will require special approval by top management. Disposal requires a special process too. Thus, fixed assets should be monitored and managed separately in the system. We are done with the expenditure cycle. Next are the subsystems of the conversion cycle. First is the production system. This system involves planning, scheduling, and control of physical product through the production process. This system handles the actual production, the transfers of raw materials from raw materials warehouse to production departments, work in process and completed finished goods, and the transfers of work in process from one department to another. Second is the cost accounting system. This system monitors the flow of cost information, the cost of raw materials, labor, and overhead expenses that are related to production. The learnings from your cost accounting um, subject, such as calculations of product costs, activity-based costing, just-in-time concepts, and many more are applied in the system. However, we will focus on the process, accounting records, and flow of information involving cost accounting system once we get to that particular module. Next, the revenue cycle. The last subsystem of TPS. The sales order processing system is the first subsystem of revenue cycle. It involves the order taking process credit approval process, shipping process of products or rendering of the service, the billing process and recording of accounts receivables. Cash receipt system is the second subsystem of revenue cycle. This involves the collection of payments from customers, depositing the collections in the bank, recording of cash receipts, in the accounting records and clearing receivables as paid. Now you have a general understanding of the transaction cycles and its subsystems. We are now going to discuss the type of accounting records 
used in the transaction cycles. The specific name of accounting records for each of the transaction cycles will be discussed in separate modules. For now, we will focus on the type of accounting records and their manual and computer-based systems. For a manual system, we have documents, journals, and ledgers. For a computer-based system, we have master files, transaction files, reference files, and archive files. Let's start with the account records under manual system. First, we have documents. Documents are evidence of an economic event and may be used to initiate transaction processing. In accounting system, information should be reliable. A reliable information requires supporting documents. Without supporting documents, the information is questionable, and that is a red flag to auditors. Second are journals. Journals are records of chronological entries supported by documents. Special journals are used to record identical or similar transactions, such as sales that are recorded in the sales journal and purchases recorded on the purchases journal. Finally, the ledgers. Ledgers are books of accounts that reflects the financial effects of a company's transaction after those are posted from the various journals. Example, a ledger account for cash, accounts receivable, and inventory. We also have a subsidiary ledgers, which are support to the general ledger control accounts. You'll notice that the process starts with documents. Data from the documents are recorded into the journals and then posted to the general ledgers. There are several types of documents, journals, and ledgers. For documents, we have source documents, product documents, and turnaround documents. Journals are divided into types, special journals and general journal. Ledgers have uh, two types, general ledgers and subsidiary ledgers. Let us discuss this starting with the documents. Source documents are created at the beginning of the transaction, and these are used to capture and formalize transaction data. The diagram on the screen illustrates a simple sales order and collection process. The process starts with taking the orders of the customer. Here, data collection. Data, data about customer orders are collected. The source document to capture and formalize the customer's order data is called sales order document. Next are product documents. Product documents are the output or results of transaction processing. In the diagram, the sales orders are sent to the sales system. After processing of sales orders and receipts of customers of their orders, an invoice or billing statement with remittance advice on it is sent to the customer. The billing statement together with the remittance advice is the product document of the sales system. Finally, the turnaround documents. 
Uh, turnaround documents are product documents of systems that become source documents for another system. In the diagram, the remittance advice attached to the invoice or billing statement are detached by the customers and sent to the seller, a company with a check payment. The remittance advice is a product document of the sales system which is to be used as a source document or reference in the cash receipts system to record collection of invoices or billing statements. So therefore, the remittance advice serve as a turnaround document. Now let's discuss the type of journals. Let's start with special journals. Special journals are used to record specific classes of transactions that occur in high volume, such as sales, purchases, cash receipts, and cash disbursements. Special journals are discussed in details on your basic accounting subjects. But for review purposes, we will illustrate it using a diagram. The diagram on your screen illustrates an example of a special journal called sales journal. This means every credit sale is recorded in the sales journal. If you have sales that are on cash instead of credit, it will be recorded in another special journal called cash receipts journal. Normally, no journal entries on special journals. The totals of each of the ledger accounts on the, on the sales journal or, or special journals for that they are calculated and then posted immediately to the general ledgers. Next we have the general journal. General journal is used to record non-recurring, infrequent, and dissimilar transactions. Examples are depreciation, write-off of accounts receivable, and accruals. The diagram on the screen is an example of general journal. Let's continue discussion of journals. Let's discuss the term called journal voucher system. Most companies replace their general journal with a journal voucher system. The journal voucher system is a special source document that contains a single journal entry indicating the general ledger accounts that are affected by the transactions. The journal voucher system is used to record summaries of routine transactions those that are from the special journals to create supporting journal entries for it. And it is also used to record non-routine transactions, adjusting entries and closing entries that are used as basis for recording to the general ledger. On your screen is an example of a journal voucher showing an entry to record uh, a sale on credit or on account. Now we will discuss the types of ledgers, starting off with the general ledgers. General ledger summarizes the activity for each of the company's ledger accounts or control accounts, such as cash account, accounts receivable account, inventory account, and many more. Take note that the general ledger are the control accounts that are presented on the financial statements. The screen shows an example of the general ledger for cash and accounts receivable. Next, the subsidiary ledgers. The subsidiary ledgers serve as a support to the balances of the general ledger accounts. This means that the general ledger is tied out or matched to the subsidiary ledger. 
As a rule, boats should tie out. Otherwise, invest investigations will be made. This is what you usually see on auditing problems, mentioning uh, the general ledger control account does not tie with the subsidiary ledger account. The screen shows you a diagram of the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger that is the record per customer. So you have customer Hobbs, Johnson, Smith, Ray, and Howard. Each of these customers has their own subsidiary ledger. The outstanding balances per customer record are computed and added together to get the final outstanding balance. On the diagram, it's 14,205,800 and 800 pesos, for example, if that is the currency. This outstanding balance should tie with the general ledger control account. On the diagram, the amounts uh, tie out, which is good. Now we're done with the account of records under manual system. We are going to tackle now the digital equivalent of manual accounting records. In computer-based accounting system, the digital equivalent is called file. There are four types of files. We have the master files, transaction files, reference files, and archive files. Master files contain permanent or semi-permanent transaction data. It generally contains account data. The best examples of these master files are the general ledger master file and subsidiary ledgers master file. Transaction files are temporary files of transaction records used to change or update data in the master file. For example, a check payment for a vendor is created or keyed in or encoded in the computer system, but this is not yet posted. The check is on the payment transaction file pending for posting. Once the payment transaction file is posted, it will update the master file. Next, we have reference files. Reference files store data that are used for processing of transactions. From the term itself, these files serve as reference of data in the computer screen. For example, income tax tables. When a payroll clerk processes payroll in the computer software, he or she does not need to go to the income tax table to compute the income tax to be withheld from the salary of the employee because the software has a built-in income tax table. The software automatically checks the built-in tax table and calculates the amount of tax based on the payroll data of the employee, such as gross salary, and other deductions that are on the computer screen of the payroll clerk. Finally, we have archive files. Archive files contain records of past, again, past transactions that are retained for future reference. Examples are journals. So these are special journals. Prior period payroll information, list of former employees and prior period ledgers. Now you have an understanding of the accounting records under manual system and computer-based system. Let's discuss one of the important uh, topics in accounting, which is audit trail of the system. Audit trail is important because it is used to verify reli reliability of information. Again, reliability of information. Let us compare the audit trail between manual system and computer-based system. 
In manual system, the audit trail can be from source documents to the general ledger and financial statements. That is what you call tracing from the source document to the financial statements. Vouching can also be made from the ledgers to the source documents. So that's vouching. You'll start with the financial statements or general ledgers and you, you pull out the supporting documents for it. In computer-based system, the audit trail is digital. The digital audit trail allows transaction tracing and vouching, similar, uh, similar to manual system. However, the audit trail is less observable than traditional manual system. You have to understand first how the computer functions. What I'm trying to say is you need to understand at what point the transaction is initiated in the system, what master files are updated once transactions are processed, what point, for example, if the user clicks save or post on the computer screen, what point the transactions are posted to the master files. You also have to understand the data that can be used as audit trails, such as posting log numbers and so forth. To make it short, you should have an understanding first of how the system works or functions, what reports can be generated to allow audit trail. To better understand audit trail under manual system, let's use a diagram. On your screen, you see the general ledger control account for accounts receivable. So that's account 102 on your chart of accounts. Aside from that, you're seeing a journal voucher for a sale transaction. This is the journal voucher. Notice that the journal voucher has a reference number, JV-001. On the general ledger control account, accounts receivable, there is a posting reference number. On September 1, an entry amounting 1,400 was made with posting reference number JV-001. This is an example of audit trail. Tracing is an example. Another audit trail for vouching purposes, notice that the journal voucher has an explanation to record sales for September 1, 2020. See sales journal number 09012020. You can look for that special journal called sales journal with that reference number to vouch the sales invoices to support the journal voucher. Now, let us illustrate the audit trail in computer-based system. We will use the audit trail from the financial statements to support in documents, so vouching. The diagram on the screen shows the accounting records in computer-based accounting systems. If you need to verify balances of ledger accounts presented on the balance sheet, you have to examine the general ledger and subsidiary ledger master files. For example, you need to audit the accounts receivable showing on the financial statements. What you need to do is you need to examine the AR general ledger master file and AR subsidiary master file. Next, if you want to know the detailed transactions for accounts receivable, you need to examine the archive code journal or sales journal. Finally, 
if you need to vouch the supporting documents for each of the sales transactions, you can pull up the sales order or sales invoices. So notice the flow, you see the arrows? This represents the audit trail from financial statements to supporting documents. All right. Now we will proceed with documentation techniques that are used to understand information system. So information systems should be documented. Documentation can be written in words, like an essay. However, a written description of a system can be wordy and difficult to follow. Therefore, another way to document information system for better understanding is using visual image to convey um, essential or vital system information more effectively and efficiently than using words. As a boat systems designers and auditors, as well as accountants, use system documentation routinely, the ability to document systems in graphic form is an important skill for accountants to master. It takes practice and experience to master this skill. In this video, we will discuss six common documentation techniques to document information system, namely data flow diagrams, entity relationship diagram, document flowcharts, system flowcharts, program flowcharts, and record layout diagram. We will start with the data flow diagram. DFD, or data flow diagram, uses symbols to represent entities, processes, data flows, and data storage that pertain to a system. They are used to represent systems at different levels of detail from very general to highly detailed. On your screen, you will see a diagram illustrating symbols used for DFDs. So familiar, familiar, I'm sorry. Familiar, familiarize yourself with the symbols. To better understand DFD, let's use the sales order processing system as an example. The screen shows a DFD of sales order processing system. The customer is the input source of data for details of orders, and the carrier is the output destination where the orders will be shipped. Examples of processes are approved sales and ship goods. Other examples are bill customers and prepare account receivables. At the top and bottom are the accounting records. The arrows, those blue arrows that you see on the screen, shows the direction of process and data. Next is entity relationship diagrams or ERD. ERD is used to represent relationship between entities. When we say entities, in ERD, it can be physical resources, events, or agents, similar to the Raya model on your module one. Physical resources, examples of those are cash and inventory. Examples of events are sales, order, and payment. Examples of agents, salesperson, customers, and vendors. The diagram for symbols using ERD are shown to you. This uh, square and a shadow behind it, a line, and the cardinality. The square with shadow behind it represents the entity. 
the line connecting the two entities, here's an example, the line connecting two entities uh, represents the relationship between the two entities. The letters or numbers beside the entity like this one, 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 M, M, M. They represent cardinality. To better, to better understand this, um, let's use the first diagram. The first diagram shows a salesperson is assigned to a company car. Notice that the numbers one on each entity is assigned to it. That means one salesperson is assigned to one company car. The second diagram shows one customer can place many orders. So one customer can place many orders. The third diagram illustrates many vendors supply many inventories. This means a company has many vendors and a vendor can supply different kinds of inventories. Next are the document flowcharts. A document flowchart is a graphical representation of a system that shows the elements of a manual system. Again, it's for manual system. It will show you accounting records, the organizational departments involved in the process and the activities being done. I, it's either clerical or physical activities that are performed in the departments. Shown on the screen are the symbols commonly used in a document flowchart. Familiarize yourself with the symbols. For example, this, um, what do you call the symbol? Quadrilateral, is this quadrilateral? I'm not sure, but I forgot. This inverted triangle, it means storage. Oh, this is pentagon. This invert, inverted pentagon represents off-page connector. The circle represents on-page connector, and so on. To reiterate, document flowcharts are used for manual system. To illustrate a flowchart, we will use the sales order processing system. On your screen, you, see, you will see a portion of the sales order processing system. Notice that the header columns represents people or departments involved in the system. Flowcharts normally start at the left section. If you want to know at what point the process starts, look for the terminal symbol, which is represented by an oblong shape. In this diagram, the process starts on the sales order department by taking orders from the customer. Under each column, the documents each department creates or processes or receives from another department or sent to another department. It also shows the activities or tasks being done under that departments. Next, we have system flowcharts. System flowcharts portray the computer aspects of a system. You use this flowchart when computer technology is involved in the process. I'll repeat, when computer technology is involved in the process, the flow of information as well as the documents. Shown on your screen are symbols commonly used for system flowcharts. So familiarize yourself with the symbols. To better understand system flowchart, we will use again the sales order processing using computer technology. On your screen, 
a shows a sales order processing using computer technology. Notice that the taking of orders are now computerized. The sales department encodes or keys in the sales order data via a computer terminal. When I say computer terminal, the computer screen. The user logs into the computer, logs in into the software, and enters the data about the sales orders. After the sales order data are entered, the computer system performs an automatic credit evaluation. The system automatically uh, check the reference file called credit history file. The purpose of that is to verify the credit standing of the customer. The system performs automatically the approval or rejection of the sales order based on um, the data or information found on the credit history file. Approved or rejected sales order are saved on the sales order database. For approved sales orders, the computer performs another computer function and that's update program. The AR master file is updated to record the approved sales orders as sales. The inventory master file is also automatically updated to reserve the inventory on hand to the approved sales orders. Now we're going to discuss program flowchart. Program flowcharts are used to understand a computer process. Shown on the screen are symbols commonly used for program flowcharts. Familiarize yourself with the symbols. Now, let us illustrate a diagram for a program flowchart using our previous uh, example, the sales order processing system. On your screen is a computer screen for processing of sales order on, a, on an accounting software called CoreFlex. Notice the data are needed to be entered on the screen. Data such as customer number, customer PO, which is given by the customer, terms, shipping information, items ordered, quantity and price are needed to save and process further the sales order. Notice also that the system assigns automatically the sales order number and tracks the status of the sales order. From our system flowchart, There is a computer process called edit and credit check. So look at the left look at the left section of your screen. There's the program called edit and credit check. Let us use the edit and credit check as a sample to create a program a program flowchart. The system processes on our examples are assumed or as if it is how the software is programmed in performing edit and credit check. On the program flowchart, the, the process starts on, on read sales order record on a transaction file. This means the system is validating the data that were entered if, it, if it's complete and after that it performs credit checking. If the system is done validating and done performing credit checking, the record or what you call end of file, the process stops. Let's assume that the sales order record is still being read by the system. 
the system checks first if the customer indicated on the sales order has passed due balance. If the customer um, has passed due balance, the system rejects the sales order or disapproves the sales order and proceeds to the next validation, which is exceed credit limit. If the customer does not have pass through balance, it will proceed again to the next validation, which is exceed credit limit. The next validation of the system is verifying the credit limit of the customers. If the sales order record will result in exceeding the available credit limit of the customer, the system disapproves or rejects the order. If the sales order is still within the available credit limit balance of the customer, the order is approved. The final validation is the system is checking if it got rejected in any of the prior validations. What are those prior validations? One is the pass to balance validation and the credit limit validation. If there is a rejection done by the system on that sales record or sales order record, the sales order is completed. I mean, the sales order is rejected and then placed on the sales order record database mark as bad or rejected. If there is no rejection made by the system, the sales order record is sent to the sales order record marked as good or approved. Finally, the record layout diagrams. Record layout diagrams are used to reveal the internal structure or arrangements, arrangement, no, internal structure or arrangement of records that constitute a file or database table. This diagram is like a spreadsheet or your Microsoft Excel showing you details for a given file. Normally, this can be seen at the back end table of a computer system and not the front end user or uh, what we call the user interface. Uh, only the database administrator or authorized ID can see the backend tables. Shown on the screen is a sample of, is a sample layout of a customer file and the data that you can see about the customer file. It has customer number, customer name, street address, city, state, zip code, and credit limit. So imagine if you're going to enter this on your spreadsheet or your Microsoft Excel. You have columns for customer number, customers, customer name, suite address, CD, et cetera, et cetera. And then once you insert several rows on your spreadsheet, one row represents a record. We will use and discuss uh, this record layout diagram in detail once we are on the database management system. It's a separate module. All right, our final topics for this module, other matters under computer-based systems, we have batch system. Batch system is a system that assemble transactions into groups for processing. This means similar transactions are grouped together for one time or short time processing. For example, Let's use payroll processing. There are payroll software that allows user to process payroll by batch, using, for example, by position level. The payroll clerk can process first the payroll of top management. Once the payroll clerk is done with the payroll of the top management, he or she can process payroll for managers and supervisors. Finally, he or she can process payroll of operations personnel. Next, we have batch processing. This means a group of similar transactions are 
accumulated or gathered over time and then processed together. For example, timekeeper waits for completion and submission of timesheets on certain a date. Once all the timesheets are submitted, the timekeeper starts reviewing and approving and posting the batch of timesheets into the computer system for payroll processing. Batch processing and batch system are related terminologies. Next, we have real-time systems. Real-time systems are computer systems that process transactions individually at the moment the event occurs. This is the opposite of batch processing. Batch processing has a time log or delay because users have to wait for the records before processing takes place. On real-time processing, once an event or record is received or has taken place, processing immediately uh, is, is done in the system. However, the disadvantage of real-time system, it requires large amount of money to develop or you know, if you have a third party provider for this, it's costly to pay for the maintenance fee or you know, any amount of fees paid to the third party software. Examples of real-time um, processing systems are reservation of airline tickets and movie tickets. Finally, we have database backup procedures. These are processes intended to create a backup copy of the computer data. And this computer data are taken and stored elsewhere. This backup is an internal control that can be used to restore the original uh, data after a data loss event. Uh, this is the end of the presentation for module two. We will now proceed with the question and answer por portion.